All right, I'll go ahead and get us started. So the story of Tucker, a community tale by the authors of Team Indigo. In light of this being a workshop for arts leaders in collaboration with cities and other entities, Team Indigo committed to taking a creative approach to our presentation while also still offering a comprehensive guide to our recommendations that could be read as a follow-up to our presentation. During our team interviews with the Tucker sponsors, we learned much about their goals, desired deliverables for this project, specifically in background on the history and formation of Tucker, as well as their previous experiences with public art. Tucker has not solidified their brand story as yet, given they are a very young city, only five years old. Since we believe branding and story should be the first step in informing tactic specifics, we thought the story was the right place to start. Thus, our artistic direction for presentation is in the form of a children's book about a child named Tucker and their journey to finding their unique identity. The characters and challenges Tucker encounters mirror Tucker the city's unique attributes, challenges, goals, and dreams, and ultimately our suggested path forward towards program execution. You may find the comprehensive and detailed version of our work in the supplemental book report, which Josh will distribute directly. Tucker is a five-year-old. Like all five-year-olds, Tucker is growing fast and has big dreams, but isn't quite sure what they want to be when they grow up. Tucker loves history and often plays dress up and acts out different stories from their city and the people who came before them. Sometimes Tucker pretends to be a train conductor driving the shiny locomotives that rumbled through the town in 1892. Sometimes Tucker pretends to be a US poultry and egg farmer in fancy dungarees collecting thousands of eggs to take to market. Sometimes Tucker dons a pressed uniform adorned with medals pretending to be an army general saluting the troops. And sometimes Tucker dresses in a white coat with a stethoscope and pretends to be the nice doctor they met at Emory University's Orthopedics and Spine Hospital when they had a broken leg. All of these were fun for Tucker and certainly felt familiar, but were they really all Tucker could be? Tucker, being thoroughly modern, had always thought there was probably something much more that defined them. But what could it be and how could they find out? Tucker needed answers, so they decided to ask the most important person they knew, the mayor. Tucker raced out to find the mayor in the fanciest of offices behind a big desk. Shy at first, Tucker told the mayor their big dreams and asked, how can I find out who I really am? Tucker, the mayor said in a gentle voice, you will find your answers by going within and discovering all the parts of yourself you must first seek out the community mirrors for they are the ones that will reflect who you really are and together can create your new identity. I wonder if we have Adria. So I guess I'll read chapter one. Tucker discovers their whole self, a journey. Before setting out, Tucker takes some time to think about the advice Mayor gave and all the questions they inspired. Who am I? What makes this city my home? What is important about community and who makes it important? What inspires me? How do I become the Tucker of my dreams? Chapter two, Tucker meets the mirrors, the community reflections. Taking the mayor's advice, Tucker invites the community mirrors to meet up to share meals at fancy round tables, just like King Arthur all around town to help with these questions. The mirrors are all kinds of different people who make up life in Tucker's home city. The brewery owner, the artist guild, the farmers, the students, the merchants, the families, and the government workers. As Tucker stands in the center of the mirrors, they see their own image reflected back and realize that all of the mirrors combined are part of who Tucker is. And together they can form a beautiful new community image for Tucker to define themselves by. But what is that new image Tucker asks? And how do we make the very best community they really defines who I am? 
The murals reflect the shops, the schools, the workers, and all of their neighbors. They tell Tucker they're envisioned creating outside places where everyone young and old will feel welcome and where they can play, celebrate, exercise, and relax. Places with whimsical and beauty where all the things Tucker loves about history combine with things that are thoroughly modern. But well, how would that look and how will they get there? I think we have some discovery ahead and I need friends to help me make my story more complete, Tucker says. And with that, Tucker invites some of their new mirror friends to join the journey as it takes a creative turn. Chapter three, Tucker is inspired, the makers. After all the round tables, Tucker and the mirror friends are so inspired to shape their inspirations into dreams and then bring them to reality. The team of friends knows they will need to venture forth and find the makers who can bring ideas to life. The makers are, of course, the artists. Tucker and the mirrors make a list of the makers they know, not just the pros, but student makers too. They also ask cities nearby to send their makers to join the fun. Chapter four. <laughs> Upon meeting the maker, Tucker and the mirrors realize their reflection of each other forms a collective dream filled with possibilities. They dreamed of bright blossom gardens growing up the walls, fantastical shapes that spin in the wind, shapes to pike their, park their bikes in, pathways that glow, shapes to give shade, pocket parks, bright colored murals and sculpted shapes giant chess games, colorful hopscotch, pavers, and tunnels of mesh. They dreamed of fun things for families to do, like art from recycled trash, game boards with people as the pieces, mosaics, kids paint themselves. Chalk art in 3D, friends painting a mural together, dancers, actors, and musicians with pop-up performances, movies under the night sky. And they even dreamed of amazing things almost never seen, like yarn playgrounds, art made of LEDs, funky furniture, surreal sandboxes, illuminated musical swings, machines made of plexi, crazy carts, or pedal pubs. They also dreamed of awesome community celebrations for every season. Lantern, bike parades, Halloween costume contest parades, a race at night with runners aglow, 4th of July parade, holiday themed fun run, grownups in costume making their way from pub to pub, a city scavenger hunt, egg dyes and egg hunts, Easter, bon Easter bonnet contest and parade, sponsored by the US Egg and Poultry. There you are, Liberty. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, cool. Um, chapter five, Tucker makes a plan. What can we do right now and where do we go from here? Excited about their dreams that are so close to reality now, Tucker and his friends host a block party and everyone is there. The mayor, the makers, the mirrors, the merchants, families, brewer, brewer, brewers, <laughs> farmers, students, and all the neighbors in the city. They share with everyone who they have discovered Tucker is and all the amazing things that the makers can make, the stuff of their dreams. The friends have a plan. The city is excited and they now know this journey's end is just the beginning. So just to wrap up, the timeline would be um, October to January is community engagement, January to March, story building, March of 22, project approval, in April to May, RFP is released. The end. Thank you. And um, Josh Penny, will you uh, take the lead as a juror? Uh, sure thing. Uh, great job, everyone. Um, this is amazing to see. And I loved following along with the story of Tucker. Um, one question, so wanna dive in. So we got some questions coming in from the other jurors um, uh, and ask those sort of load. Uh, would love to just hear more about your process for engaging uh, the city of Tucker. 
what questions did you ask and what uh, what were you surprised to learn when talking to them? Um, I'll take that, I guess. Liberty and I went to a meeting with them in person and we asked them a thorough list of questions to develop background to understand where they are now in their process. And they did share with us that they would had a city study done um, and we did read that as well offline. And we asked them questions about what they hope to see, what they, you know, what their process is for approvals, um, what would be, what their background with public art has been. And there were some interesting stories we were <laughs> surprised to hear. Uh, it had gone kind of a little bubbly in the past with public art. Um, and because of all the work that was done, um, we didn't find that they had a clear story yet. And, and it seemed like it would be helpful to start back at sort of a little bit of a beginning, taking into account all of the uh, research and city study that had been done, but then take it to the community in this way to develop the message and the brand identity that's going to be expressed. Yeah, and I'll add to that as well. I think in those questions, um, we asked them a lot about well, what, what makes Tucker unique, because that was one of the things that they asked for was we want art that, that showcases that. Um, and they didn't quite know what that was yet. Um, they didn't quite have an answer to that. And they wanted to, to showcase the resiliency of the businesses in the downtown area there, but they didn't yet have those stories of resilience from those, those businesses in the community. And so I think that was part of our um, step for them was to go back and really have those conversations and those storytelling activities with their community so they could then know what that story was. Thank you for that. Um, I have a question from another one of our jurors, Amir uh, Faroki, Councilman Faroki. Um, are there specific locations you all have identified uh, and have you considered uh, any challenges that private property alongside public property may present? Um, yeah, we'll start there. Clay and Liberty, y'all were there on site, but I know the city identified a specific block that was kind of their test block to start with. Yeah, yeah. they had a few alleys that, um, that they were wanting to do eventually in the longer plan, but they showed us specifically little sections that they want to start with. And when it comes to the public and private partnership to make this happen, the city had already acquired some land so not only did they give us the alley that they specifically want this project to happen in and kind of outline from one alley over the next you know five years where they want to go they've also started making purchases around the area and working with the entrepreneurs in downtown so they they've already taken some steps and they know this is going to happen but we're just helping them get some structure and of course give uh help with the engagement process Fantastic. Uh, one other question from Councilman Faroki. Um, looking at your recommended milestones and timeline, uh, you talk about making budget presentations to City Council in March of 2022. And Councilman Faroki asks, uh, why wait until the budget presentation to engage City Council? Have you considered engaging earlier? Yeah, so they, uh, they're they always in, in, uh, engaging with city council because like I said, they've already started making purchases of the land around the area and working with um, the business owners there. So th they already have a certain amount of budget and a certain kind of ideas of what they want in the area. But when it comes to those major, you know, July 1st, when the budget for the next year comes out, the timeline just kind of lines up with those conversations that start from March, April, May, leading up to the new budget for the next year for major purchases and really changing the uh, the way the alley looks and making some major visual and engagement changes for the, the community down there. And that timeline was backed in to the uh, delivery date they said they wanted. So we, we uh, schedule it accordingly. Thank you so much. It looks like we are within, um, I think we have like 30 seconds left, but just want to express how amazing of a job uh, that y'all did and, and congratulations on this project. Thank you. Thank you.